Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Know the Facts. Tonight we have a very special guest. He used to be Dr. Harvey Claremont. Now he's Dr. W uh, Whitewater Claremont. He examines all kind of water all over the place. Uh, he's a quite, a quite a story to tell you here about different things. Doc, if you want to start, go ahead. Sure enough. Yeah, we've had a program on the tap water in the, in the town of Shrewsbury. And uh, I think today we need to focus a little bit on bottled water because this is what people are buying. You don't understand the amount of bottled water that's being sold here in the United States. It's amazing. 67 million plastic bottles a day. 67 million a day. If you can just fathom that. So this is the equivalent of 300 million tons a year of plastic from those bottles that goes into the environment. Now roughly only about 10% of that is recycled. Massachusetts fortunately is a little bit higher than that percentage wise, but still in the United States only 10% is recycled. 12% gets incinerated in the regular trash. And that doesn't necessarily, that's not a good thing. We don't, in other countries, we don't have that kind of incineration that we have here in the United States. So maybe it's only partially incinerated. That releases a lot of toxins out into the atmosphere. The rest of it, 70 plus percent, goes into the land, goes into the land, goes into the waterways, the waterways go into the ocean, and guess what? We have huge areas in the ocean, they, they call them uh, tires. That's the circular, like a, like a little whirlpool type thing that goes on in the ocean naturally. Yeah. That's where all of this damn plastic winds up. One of these tires is the size of the state of Texas, for God's sakes. Wow. Huge amounts of plastic that winds up in the ocean. And so that's one of the big issues, the environmental issue, is a big issue with plastic, because that doesn't biodegrade. Biodegrading means that the action of bacteria, fungus, in other words, living organisms are going to help to degrade it. Doesn't happen with plastic. That has to naturally degrade itself, which takes up to a thousand years. Now, I don't think I'll be here in a thousand years. Maybe Bob will. I won't be I here won't in a thousand. Here. You'll be here. I won't be here next year. You'll be. You'll be giving them hell years from now. But nevertheless, if you can just fathom the amount that's out there. So how does it break down? Well, it breaks down with a combination of sun, in other words, heat. And <coughs> that breaks down the little bonds, that sunlight breaks down the little bonds that's in this polycarbonate. Now, poly means that there's a whole bunch of different monomers that go into the polymers. So a bunch of monomers creates, by polymerization, a big polymer. That's really, you know, kind of chemistry talk, you know, but this is what happens. These are big, big molecules. They get broken down by the sun gradually, gradually, gradually. Eventually, they break down into microscopic pieces, less than five millimeters in size. Very, very small, very small. That is in the ocean water. And guess what? The birds come, grab some of the stuff that's bigger, they think that it's food, can kill a bird, and it does. The big fish come, they eat the big stuff too. That can kill a fish as well. But it's those microscopic pieces, all the fish are, are, are sucking this in. Much of it gets into their bodies, and guess what? We eat the food, we eat the food. So, so far, they're not defining any, any uh, cancers or things like that that have happened as a result of eating it, but that's another big issue with the breakdown of plastic. 
Doc, remind the people of what happens when you leave uh, water in the sunlight. Well, that's, that's another one of the issues. There's some things that you just need to know. If you look at your recycling paper that they give you, it tells you to reduce the amount that you're using, reuse your bottles, and recycle. Three R's. They figured, well, people probably don't have much intelligence, so they'll remember their three R's, reading, writing, arithmetic, you know? But listen, you can't reuse the plastic bottles. If you reuse them, it's going to leach out even more of these chemicals from the, uh, from the plastic. The monomers. The monomers are not good things. Monomers will cause an endocrine disruption in your body. What I mean by that is a little female hormone. Female hormone. So you drink the water with all of this in it, gets, and you put that out in the sunlight, that's going to make more and more of this stuff leach out. Now they defined back whoa, years ago that the stuff that was causing all of this endocrine disruption was a thing called BPA. BPA. And so once that got out into the into the media and all, they said, oh, well, we're going to make these bottles BPA free. Wonderful. But they don't tell you what they substituted for it. Because the BPA makes the bottles flexible. That's, that's why the BPA is in there. So now what do they use? They use BPF. BPS has not been studied over the course of time to see if it has the same problems that BPA has. And in fact, if you test these bottles with an independent lab, you'll still find BPA, even though it says it's BPA free. How can they get away with this? Well, our wonderful FDA. They're the ones who are supposed to be the ones watching over these companies that are manufacturing this stuff. They're not watching over them. If you look at all of the chemicals that are out there that the FDA is supposed to be monitoring, less than 5% of all those chemicals have actually been monitored and studied by the FDA. Less than 5%. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. And so you can't depend on them. And believe me, never believe anything the government or one of their agencies tells you. That is, that's... That is a fact. That's Don't true. believe them. That doesn't mean we shouldn't have them. They are serving a purpose. They are doing some good. But they're not working hard enough. They're not really taking control of all those companies that are producing all this damn plastic. Yeah. So number one, never, ever drink from a plastic bottle that's been out in the sunlight because that leaches that BPA. Number two, never reuse your bottle. I don't care about the three R's that they tell you. You're not an idiot, you know. Just like reading, writing, and arithmetic. Nobody writes anymore, you know what they do, they just type it out now. Nobody does arithmetic anymore, it's all fancy stuff now. So all of the R's are gone out of our lives now. Don't reuse your plastic bottle. And number three, nothing wrong with using a true reusable water bottle. To get a true reusable water, water bottle, which is out on the market, they use a glass, glass on the inside of the container. You can reuse that as many times as you want. Glass doesn't leach anything out. Remember, we used to have thermos bottles. They didn't want to use them because if they dropped and all, they cracked the glass on the inside. Okay. Well, nowadays they have tensile strength glass. They have very good glass. You need to use either glass or stainless steel. Get away from the plastic. So those are the three things you need to do. So, okay. Okay. Uh, Shrewsbury is a small town. That's why everything can be certain. Certain issues are gotten away. 
uh, gotten away from with for, with for sure. The residents are the last to know, and many times they end up in the middle of whatever. No matter what, no matter what it is, but some residents ask for it. Residents are getting fed up with that kind of leadership. The ones who like to inflate their ego and the hell with everyone else, especially with residents. This town is heading down a one-way street. When it's over and done with, they will turn at what has happened in, in state. Where did we go wrong? Easy. After stepping on everyone, no one is left. To them, look in the mirror, it will explode. You will still come up with a loser. We have that now. The residents who stuck stuck to them uh, are our biggest are our biggest losers. So keep so keep butt kissing because you'll help the help them get started. They stop saying thanks, hoping you, in in your mind you will be next selectman or town manager or dog catcher. We all all know. The morning coffee and the full of wannabes. Do you know what he or she said? Uh, or they picked up the wrong person? Or if I see him, I'll beat him up? They think they're real tough guys. They, especially when they talk about me, they want to beat me up. Well, come on, beat me up. I'm right here. Uh, they're looking for extras in the film. From Cinderella or A Hundred Blind Mice. Film over. There are 200 blind mice in Shrewsbury. One is Tom Sawyer, and the other one is Donna O'Connor. Cannot play Cinderella. Just look. The rest may be the school committee and the finance committee. Just one more. But who knows? They may make a movie Mission Impossible. Keep bashing good people. You never know. They will play only the heavy part. One thing people forget, time just doesn't go by. It consumes your entire life. So what you do in your in life hangs on your hangs on you. Well, some some politicians could cure could care less. Remember your family and pay attention to all of them. If you get there, heaven will not let them let you win. Think of that. You won't because you're a big shack, big nothing, men and women. So all you think, God's gift, get ready for a big reveal, reversal in life. God granted you the gift of children, and they are all pr precious when they grow up. Uh, I might have finished it. Uh, grow up. Do you want to be a, you want to be life? If if you don't, you're you're very sick. Isn't your marriage important? High kids school. When they get married, you will keep on doing the rotten, rotten, filthy things you do to people to be a phony, big shot, and hateful of of your fellow men. Man, the entire school committee, uh, board, only uh, the selectmen, only two people. The other the other three are great. One man, one woman, the finance committee, the whole bunch. Planning board is the best. The zoning board is very good. Quinn Sigerman, water commission is great. Very, very good. The biggest troublemakers are Mo DiPaolo and Tom Sawyer. I could fill three packs of paper for each one. What a shame. A town going to hell. Money hungry, ego. Corrupt people, men and women. Where is the 1.5 million gallons of water that's lost every day? But in the meantime, get rid of the jerks on the different boards. I may write things you don't want to hear. You have tough luck. Okay, sir. Okay, well, let's, let's go on a little bit more about these uh, bottles, okay? Sure. So, what are the dangers besides what I've talked about already? You know, the plastic going out in the ocean, the microplastic, etc. There is a huge cost to producing these plastic bottles. 
For every one plastic bottle, they're using two quarts of water. To transport this stuff and all in those trucks, all of the things that you have to add in, because that all is part of the whole industry, they're using a lot of oil reserves as well. So that has to get factored in as well. So it costs a fair amount to produce these things. So you got to add it in. What are the problems now with, with the water? Now, I've talked about the BPA and now BPA free, which is not really BPA free. They use BPF, BPS, uh, you know, nonsense, total nonsense, still producing BPA. What does that BPA do? Well, first of all, it does hit the brain, especially in kids. Causes a lot of behavioral problems in kids. ADHD, for example, seems to be related to the amount that they're drinking. So there's also other learning disorders as well besides that. We've tried to relate different cancers to the use of BPA. For example, I told you that it was a hormone alter, uh, alterator. It does possibly, you can relate it to breast or prostate cancer, which are both endocrine related as well. They're trying to relate it to different heart problems, not definitely established yet. Trying to relate it to obesity, trying to relate it to diabetes. So there's a number of issues with just the BPA part. Now what's the other problem? The phthalates, P-H-T-H, phthalates. Hard to say, but that's what it is. Phthalates cause some liver cancer. And that's still in your bottle as well, and that does leach out as well, the phthalates. Also, most of the bottled water I told you before comes right out of your tap water, and they just purify it just like you would if you did it yourself in, in the home. What's to prevent that water from having a contaminant? For example, right here, right here in Shrewsbury, Look at all of the contaminants we've had over the years. Now, not just the hexachromium and all. There's been instances of arsenic in there. They're, now they're talking about these uh, polyfluoride compounds that are in there. They say, oh, the EPA says that it's uh, un under the level of the, uh, you know, under the level that's acceptable. You know, what the heck? I don't want any of it in my water. But we don't have control of that. We don't know what was on that, that land before they put the well in and all. And eventually that leaches down into the water. So there's a number of contaminants that can be in this bottled water. But you don't know because the FDA doesn't test for all these things. That's one of the big issues. Even the large jugs, the thick, thick plastic, thick plastic, now the thick plastic, uh, that can leach out antimony when that sunlight gets into it. Now these big bottles are reused a lot. Remember I told you, don't reuse your single use bottles. Well, there's a certain use time too for the thick bottles as well, because that does leach out antimony as well, and that is a known carcinogen, antimony. Also, I told you about the sunlight getting in. Don't drink that water. Why? It has leaching out dioxin. And dioxin itself accelerates breast cancer. Now, why are we so concerned about this? Well, just in my lifetime, back when I was a kid, we didn't see a lot of breast cancer. We didn't see puberty coming on in young girls at a very young age. We didn't see those things. Now it's almost accepted. It's accepted. Puberty at age 10, 11, 12. I, why? I don't know. But bottled water seems to have a rise every year in the number that are being drunk. Kids walk around with this all the time in these single-use bottles, you gotta at least wonder, 
whether there's a connection here or not. So again, nothing that we can prove at this point, but it's something that you really have to think about. What else you got, Bob, or else should I go on? Uh, go on. Okay, no problem doing that. Sure. <laughs> also, <coughs> we had talked about uh, some of the other problems with the microplastic too. We talked about the fish getting this stuff into their bodies. We eat the fish. We don't know. Uh, we don't know yet if it is causing any problems with our food supply that we're eating as well. Yeah. So we don't know yet. Who knows? Ten years from now, they'll have all that information for us, and they'll tell you what you can't eat too. So it's not just the fish. It's the birds. The birds also peck at this damn plastic stuff. They get it into their uh, bodies as well. Like I mentioned before, it kills birds, but at least we're not eating a lot of them. Maybe the pheasant that's out there, if you're a hunter and all, you maybe you have a little, little pheasant every now and then. I know when I was out in Alaska, we ate uh, ptarmigan, you know, little birds. You know, sort of like the little grouse and all, you know. Uh, but that, that's what we had back there. So I think it's a time that we mention a little bit, you know, an, an educational piece besides the water bottle piece. What do you know about plastic? Well, a lot of it is a result of our recycling. And did you remember that those little rect uh, triangular things that are on the bottom of the bottles and all, they have a little triangle and it tells you whether they're in which category, one through seven. The category ones and the category twos are perfectly good for recycling. In, in Shrewsbury, it's different in every community, but it's good for recycling, ones and twos. Never recycle three. What's, what, what's a plastic three? Plastic three are those plastic wraps that they put over all of the foods that you see. All those plastic wraps. Can't recycle those. If you do, they'll, they'll reject it for you, unfortunately. Plastic number one, this is the number one. Those single-use bottles, that's a number one. That's fine, recycle that. Number two are the opaque ones. You can't see through it. In other words, like the Tide and all those bottles like that, like the milk bottles and all, you can't see through it. Yeah. Those are number twos, perfectly fine. Throw them in the recycle bin. Number three, no. Now number four and number five, it's a maybe. That's all they tell you, maybe. So, my gosh, it's, uh, it's ridiculous. Fours, fives, and sixes are all maybes, recyclable, maybe not. Who makes that decision? Well, the guy who's picking it up probably, you know, and he doesn't know anything. So all he can tell is that you got bottled water in there, you got opaque bottles in there, that's okay. Whatever else you put in there, I guess is probably okay too. As long as you don't put the plaster, the uh, plastic sheets in there, you know, that's me. okay. Yeah. I see some of the supermarkets steam cleaning those big sheets of heavy, heavy plastic yep. that go over the food. Oh yeah, they do. That's not recyclable either. Oh, no. That goes out into the landfill. They tell you to put it in your rubbish. It doesn't deteriorate because it's not biodegradable. No. And so it's, it's there, a thousand years. Maybe we'll be around when that happens, you I know. Doubt it. Hey, we're we're increasing longevity. Well, maybe not. The United States isn't anymore. Last three years we're actually decreasing longevity. We're actually doing that. We're about forty second on the list of longevity now in the turn in the countries, United States. Why? Well they say it's because of suicide and drug abuse and all this other all these platitudes that they tell you, you know, but that's not a good sign. That's not a good thing. It's not a healthy thing for our country, that's for sure. I want to live to be 100. I know Bob wants to live to be 100 so he can give the, the, the selectmen hell for another 10, 15 years, you know. He wants to do that. But I don't know. Things are not that, not that healthy in the United States right now. 
Yeah. Yeah. Two minutes. We got. Okay. What do we want to talk about here? Well, <coughs> we talked about all of the problems, the dangers of it, the contaminants and all that can happen, the dioxin that can happen. So all those things we've we've talked about those. So what else can we talk about? Let's talk about a little about all ocean. I talked about the stuff in the ocean. What other trash is in that ocean besides that? What's the number one thing that is out in the ocean that doesn't get recycled? Cigarettes. Those filters on the cigarettes. Number one. Even more than plastic bottles. Even more. And so, cigarette butts. All of these other things like the plastic, the plastic uh, sheets and all, all those things are out there as well. And the only other thing that's out there that's almost equivalent are the aluminum cans. Aluminum cans. That's not biodegradable either, unfortunately. That's out there for the long term. And so, when you put them all together, that's what you get in all of these tires. Remember I told you about, it's spelled G-Y-R-O-S, that, that circular like little whirlpools in the ocean and all. That's where all that stuff congregates. There's several in the North Hemisphere, several in the South Hemisphere. One big one in the Indian Ocean. But the biggest one is down in the Southern Hemisphere. I'm sorry, <coughs> between Hawaii and California, the size of Texas. Huge amount of, uh, of uh, plastic that's out there. What are we doing about it? Well, we're cleaning up the beaches. We yeah. tell people to recycle. Not working. It helps. It does help. But only 10% gets recycled, remember. 10%, that's damn small. That's a small amount.